And now, get ready to smile again with radio's home folks, Vic and Sade, written by Paul Reimer. Here they are again, folks, your good friends Vic and Sade, brought to you by the makers of Crisco. And with them is your radio neighbor, Mrs. Beach. Mrs. Beach has something mighty important on her mind today, something I know you'll all be interested in. Yes, friends, the government has told us a way that we women can help out in this war effort. You see, they're having a real problem in keeping enough of the non-perishable foods to ship to our boys overseas. So they're asking us to make a point of buying all the perishable foods, like fresh fruits and vegetables, while they're in season. The government is even making victory food specials on these foods, so we'll know just when they're the most plentiful and at their very best. And you will buy them, won't you? That way we won't be using up the food our soldiers and sailors need to keep them fit for their jobs. And you can plan such delicious meals around these Victory Food Specials, you know. Probably save money on your food budget, too. Because usually they're the very best buy on the market. Many stores even have special low prices on them. Just get in the habit of looking for your Victory Food Specials every time you go to market. Look for the white cards with a big V marked on them, telling you what the Victory Food Specials are. The Department of Agriculture says if we'll do that, if we'll buy all we can of these food specials, well, it's actually the biggest job we women can do to help win this war. And I'm sure you feel the way I do, that the next best thing to having our boys home again is to see that they get everything they need while they're away. Isn't that true? So when you go to the store, always look for the white cards with a big V and see what your victory food special is. You'll be helping your government and your boys in the service and yourself, too. And now let's see who's home at the Gook House. Well, sir, it's a few minutes past 9 o'clock in the morning as we enter the small house halfway up in the next block now. And we find Mrs. Victor Gook and her son, Mr. Rush Gook, not in the kitchen, not on the porch, not in the living room or dining room, not upstairs, but high aloft in the attic. The light is inadequate and we're barely able to discern our friends. Young Rush is saying discontentedly, Yes, but it's dark and stuffy and miserable and hot and dusty up here. Yes, hurry up and open the window. Well, I'll peel off my shirt. Open the window first. We have to have light and air before we choke. Atmosphere like this makes an individual feel mean. Keep a person up here eight minutes and they're liable to get the impulse to face their grandmother one upside the snoot. I was reading in the newspaper where four guys were cooped up in a boxcar and they got to sticking pins in each other's flesh. And Slide I, that window up, will you? I'm trying to. It works stiff as a horse. You want some help? I'll get it. Ooh. Ish, what a nasty noise. Gives you the willies. For sure feels good. Yes, move to one side so a little blows on me. Well. What's the matter? So that's what's become of Rooster Davis's taped up tennis ball. Is it on the porch roof? Yeah. Wonder if I'm still little enough to climb out of Look, this window. Look, Sonny, we're up here for work. We've put this attic off and put this attic off. Now that we're here, let's make every minute count. I know it's not pleasant on a nice summer morning to have to breathe this awful stale air. Hey, Bluetooth! Bluetooth Johnson's strolling up the street. Well, leave him stroll. Now the first thing... Bluetooth! Hey! All right, all right. (laughs) He can't locate me. He's staring at the house, but the tree hides me from view. Come here and see the bewildered expression he's got on his face. Look up over your head, Bluetooth. I'm on top of the telegraph pole. He bit. He's looking up. No, the other telegraph pole, Bluetooth. Rush, we're not going to have any shenanigans, and that's all there is about it. Come away from that window. Uh, Let's pitch in and use some elbow grease and get through. Shouldn't take us more than an hour and a half if we hustle. An hour and a half? Mom, are you calmly telling me we have to skulk around in this horrible... You can cut out the complaining and bellyaching right here and now, mister. Oh, but holy smoke, flesh and blood can't endure... Just forget about flesh and blood. We plan to get after this attic way early this summer when school first let out. Goodness, your vacation's almost over, and we're only just tackling the job. You've stalled me off and stalled me off. I've got you up here at last, and I don't want to hear any grousing and sobbing. And... You sitting down. I might as well sit down while you're telling me. Get up me. from there this second. When was it? Just last Thursday, we were all set to clean the attic, and I let you traipse off to Tawanda or someplace? You said then you'd work like a beaver straightening around up here. <laughs> Oh, for mercy's sake. Ouch, doggone it. Well, can't you stand on your feet? That's a fine lot of sympathy to give a guy that falls down and almost murders herself. Hurt yourself? Sure. Well, I imagine you live. What'd you trip over? Half with popcorn popper. Pick it up and lay it on the trunk. 
Oh, to sling it out the window and smash it in eight million fragments. It's strictly your own fault. You're the party that tosses that popcorn popper up here on the floor. When I put it away, I lay it carefully on the steps. I'd like to broke my leg. Rub it a little. I've got everything pretty well organized in my head how we're going about this job. You do exactly what I tell you to do and report promptly the minute you've finished each little assignment. And that way, working together, we'll be down... Listen. Hmm? I heard somebody. I don't hear anybody. <laughs> Probably Bluetooth Johnson prowled around hunting for me. He couldn't locate my voice, and I bet $40 he's out in the yard looking Let's all over. Let's put Bluetooth Johnson and everything else out of our minds for the next couple hours or so. Next couple hours or so? You said an hour and a half. I don't know how long it'll take us. I know this much, though. We're going to stay till we get done. My leg hurts. Most likely you're on the point of death. Now, let's get moving. First thing I want you to do is pick up all the junk. Listen. Scatter... And don't tell me listen anymore, either. No, but... You hear that? Hear what? Listen once. Uncle Fletcher by George. Oh, my. We're in the attic, no, Uncle Fletcher. No, you don't. Be still. Quiet. You're going to ignore him? Well, I certainly am. It is hardly like you, Mom, to ignore visitors that call it oh, your home. Oh, yes, he just wandered in. He'll wander out again in a minute. Lady! Listen to him. First thing I want you to do, Willie, is pick up this accumulation of stuff litter in the floor. And while you're busy Listen at that, to I'll... Him. What? Poor old Uncle Fletcher. Lady! He'll go away directly. Now, please, Rush, hop in and buckle down. What are you doing? Peeling off my lame brain shirt. I'm about to choke from the heat. Anything to make a diversion. Anything to kill time. And after all those... Lady. Uncle Fletcher's coming upstairs. Let's lower our voices. It isn't like you, ma'am, to treat flesh and blood relations like oh, they were... Oh, flesh so... and blood relations, my eye. Be fine if he joined us, wouldn't it? We'd get plenty accomplished, wouldn't we? He knows we're around somewhere. He... Lower your voice. He knows we're around somewhere. How does he? Because all the doors are open. He appreciates we wouldn't go off and leave the house wide open. Upstairs, are you, lady? Oh, darn it. He'll track us down. I'll take you a bath, are you, lady? Might as well give up the ghost, ma'am. Yes, we'd feel awful foolish getting caught up here all guilty like we were hiding. Shall I holler to him? Lady! Ma'am, shall I holler to him? All right. Hello, Uncle Fletcher. Oh, uh, hey, down there, Uncle Fletcher. Let you right. Yeah, I'm in the attic. Why? Attic, huh? Yeah, Mom's with me. Why? Come on up. Oh, well, you needn't have told him that. He might have decided to trot on along about it. Oh, it's morning. Yeah. How are you, Uncle Fletcher? Yes, like the scream is off the bell. Watch out for your head coming up those stairs. Who's this? Now, look, mister, maybe we can still get something accomplished. I'll send Uncle Fletcher down on the trunk out of our road. He won't want to stay in this hot, sticky, dusty place more than five minutes, and then we can go well, ahead. Well, your sidekick, Bluetooth Johnson, outside, Rush. Oh, did you? Yes, I did. You stand out in the yard, and I... By George, it's dark. Yes, Uncle Fletcher. I just imagine you won't want to stay. We're straightening around up here, and we're anxious to get done. Well, I got kind of a sticky sensation. That's because it's so close and airless. Fine. Uh, Sadie, I saw Ted Stubb on him a while ago also. Fred... Willie, you needn't stand there. Have you picked up one single thing yet? No, I'm still peeling off my shirt. Oh, well, honestly. Well, shot. Yes, I saw old Ted Stembottom. Fred Stembottom. That's what I say. I jollied him. Ted and I jolly back and forth all the time. Ted, I said, you ought to be arrested for ordering this weather. Ted laughed. The weather man's a scoundrel. He says, I believe the next time I see him, I'll punch him in the nose. I give old Ted back as good as he said. Ted, I said... Looking serious and not looking on. They say there's going to be a law passed for everybody Uncle to wear Fletcher, their overshoes you... unless the temperature is 40 below zero. Furthermore, Ted, I said, I know this. Uncle why. Fletcher. You heard this joke, have you seen? No, I was just going to suggest that maybe you'd like to sit down on the trunk there. Glorious. That way, Rush and I can go ahead with our work. Yes. Now, stop the stalling you. We've been here almost half an hour, and what have we done? Absolutely oh. nothing. It stood for about all the nonsense I'm going to stand for. Uh-oh. Goodness, Uncle Fletcher. I fell down. You didn't hurt yourself. Sure, I hurt myself. I think I fell down for fun. What'd you trip over? Numb skull popcorn popper. You didn't pick up that popcorn popper. I started to, but you attracted my attention by giving a speech about all the stuff you wanted me to do and in well, order to listen. Up I... now. Uncle Fletcher might have killed himself. Yes. He didn't come any closer to killing himself than I did. Pick up that popcorn popper. Not another word. Mm. Sadie, do you remember Irma Fokessie there in Belvedere? No. 
moved to Dubuque, Missouri, married a man 36 years old, and later died. No. Rush, I warned you. I'm that. picking up stuff. I got my arms full of stuff I picked up. Well, keep right on. No more dolphin. Uh-huh. Rush, this Irma Flo Kessie, that was such a great friend of your mother's, Aaron Belvedere, used to have a little habit of slapping her husband's face in public. She was a peevish woman, see? Least little thing like her behind. <laughs> Go on, Rush. <laughs> Uncle Fletcher's talking to me. You can listen and work. How's that? Nothing. Uh-huh. Well, sir, Rush, Irma Flo Cassie's husband would say, I believe it's going to rain, Irma Flo. Irma Flo would turn and hit him upside the jaw. Her husband's statement was going to rain rubbed her the wrong way, understand? Or maybe at the dinner table he'd say, Please pass the pepper, Irma Flo. Irma Flo would smack him for that. Half with husband got so every time he opened his mouth, he'd hide his face in his arms so his wife... Oh, my gracious sakes alive. He slipped off the trunk. Hurt yourself, Uncle Fletcher? Sure. Well, how'd you happen to fall off the trunk? It slipped me. It slid off. I give up, Rush. Huh? I give up. You mean... We're going downstairs. All? Come on, Uncle Fletcher. We're all going downstairs. Fine. Step along, everybody. That looks much better than how you've cleaned it up. Yes, doesn't it? Rush makes a nice helper for you. Makes a glorious helper. Which way are you headed, Uncle Fletcher? Oh, up the alley, I guess. Towards Tatman's vacant lot? Uh-huh. I'll go with you. Which concludes another brief interlude at the small house halfway up in the next block. And so we leave Mrs. Beach and Chris goes Vic and Sade until the next time. Don't forget to listen. Zed Roberts speaking.